Hey everybody, I hope y'all are having a wonderful day today and welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be checking out the new Makeup Forever HD Skin Matte Velvet Undetectable Long Wear Blurring Powder Foundation. I don't know why they always give these things such long names. However, this is what the product looks like. So this retails for $43 and I think that's the same price as the liquid foundation and it's available in 32 shades, which is less than the number of shades than the liquid foundation. So um, this one, claims to be a lightweight medium to full coverage powder foundation that blurs imperfections and mattifies for up to 24 hours and it's supposed to give a natural real skin finish so I am a little concerned about the shade that I got it looks like I'll be able to work with it but I may have to like finesse it it might be a little bit too dark so let me show you this one compared to my ooh, oh my sponge just fell out but let me show you the shade of this compared to my liquid foundation so again did I say what shade this was? This one is the shade 4R61 Cool Almond, which is tan to deep skin with rosy undertones. So this is the powder shade that I got. And based on like the shade range, I feel like this was really my only option. And then in the liquid foundation, I wear the shade 3R58. So I think you guys can tell that the liquid foundation is lighter. So I do feel like this one might be a little too dark, but again, this was like my best option. So we're gonna do the usual today I'm going to apply it and give you guys my first impression and then I'm going to wear it for about eight hours and I'll see you know how I think it holds up on my oily skin and I'll let y'all know if I think that this is something that y'all should try out so let's jump right into it okay so I kept going back and forth about whether or not I want to use this sponge I never use the sponges that come with powder foundations but this one is pretty unique so it has like a dual side to it so one side is supposed to give you medium coverage or you can use it for touch-ups and then the other other side is supposed to give you full coverage you can also use this powder to give you sheer coverage or to just set your liquid makeup and if you want to do that then you would just apply it with um, more of like a fluffy brush now I am a little confused about the instructions here because it says the white side of the sponge is supposed to give you medium coverage or that's the side that you use for touch up and then the beige side is for full coverage now call me crazy but I feel like both sides of the sponge are the same color but do y'all see a difference now it does look like on this more like fuzzy side so y'all can't really pick this up on camera but this side of the sponge is a bit more fuzzy if you're familiar with a microfiber sponge that's what this feels like it does look like there is like a white film I guess on this side of the sponge and then this side of it the one that has the brand name on it this one is the smooth side so I think the smooth side is the full coverage side and then the the fuzzy microfiber side is supposed to be the medium coverage side I don't know but that's how we're gonna test it out um, like I said I usually don't do the powder or the I usually don't do the sponges that come along with powder foundations but just because this one is kind of unique I guess we'll give it a shot if I don't like it or if I just feel like my instinct is telling me to go with my brush then I'll just switch over to my brush so I would typically put on my liquid concealer first before I go in with a powder foundation but I'm gonna do the powder foundation first because I really want to see what that looks like like on its own before I kind of alter the color of it in some areas with um, the concealer so I'm gonna start with this fuzzy side of the sponge which again I think that's supposed to be for like medium coverage and this is going to be you know a little too dark so let's prepare ourselves for that when I apply it but I'm just going to start applying it right on the cheek area and the shade is actually not bad like it could be a little bit lighter but it's not bad it's not as dark as I thought it was going to be so it's supposed to be a medium to full coverage and I feel like this is a good medium coverage. It covered up pretty much everything that I have. On this side I can still see a little bit peeking through but it's basically medium coverage. I'm not crazy about this already but I think that that's more so the fact that I just prefer applying my powders with a brush. I just never use these types of sponges but I am going to switch it over to the smooth side and I'll apply the powder on the other side before I finish my forehead and let me see if the smooth side will give me full coverage right off the bat. That's what it claims to do. I feel like the coverage level is pretty much the same with this side. I don't really see 
a difference in terms of like how both sides of the sponge like actually apply the product though I mean it's going on really nicely it already looks nice and smooth and it does look like it's blurring so it applies it okay but I'm just not a sponge person so maybe I'm just biased by that but the sponge is okay if you like using them and they would definitely be okay for like touch-ups on the go but I am going to switch over to my brush so this is my Luxie 680 brush this is my preferred brush for powder foundations I will try to remember to link it um, down below because everybody always asks me about this one and the one that I use for liquid foundations. So I'm just going to pick some up on this brush and I've tapped off the excess. So I'm going to use this to see if we can build this up to a full coverage and then I will apply it to the rest of the face. See, I, I just feel like this right here just feels better. Like I feel like I'm controlling the product a little bit better and I just feel like I'm able to spread it onto my face better with this brush. I still see a little bit of my imperfections coming through, so I don't feel like it's been built up to a full coverage just yet. And although I prefer medium coverages, like I like to use um, like minimal product on my face, but you know, for the sake of trying it out, I am gonna go back in a minute to see if I can build it up um, even more with another layer of product, but it's blending out really nicely and it does look nice and blurring. So it looks really good so far and I like the shade, like it could be just a tad, a tad lighter, but the shade is okay. So I'm going to go onto this side with another layer with the brush and then like I said, we'll go back and see if we can fully cover this area up right here. And I know I always forget to mention this at the beginning of my videos, but for those of you who are new here, I don't ever test out um, foundations for the first time with primer, so I just have my skincare on just so that you're aware. Okay, so that's pretty much like one layer all over the face. I think it looks really nice. I think it looks really pretty. Um, I can think of some other cheaper powder foundations that I think do pretty much the same thing. So nothing is blowing me away right now that's making me wanna tell y'all, you know, you have to run out and get this, but it is pretty. So I'm gonna go back onto this side right here and I'm gonna see if I can put on another layer and build this up to full coverage. I don't know, I feel like this isn't like full coverage. It's like a high medium coverage, like that did cover up more, but I feel like I would consider this a medium coverage powder foundation. All right, so I always take note of what the makeup looks like, like right on the areas where I have pores and it doesn't look bad, but it does look like it's slightly clinging to a couple of areas right on the sides of my nose and I mean like slightly because I have oily skin I'm expecting that after a couple of hours this is going to smooth itself out when my oils start to come through but I know that we're focusing on reviewing this for oily skin but I know some of you have dry skin so if you do have dry skin um, I feel like it might cling but maybe that's something that you go through with all powder foundations but this one does look like it is ever so slightly clinging to some areas like right up in here. But overall, this is what it looks like. And I think it looks nice and smooth, nice and pretty. Let me go over the, the claims one more time. Is it lightweight? Most definitely. It's definitely lightweight. And of course, it does have a matte finish because it is a powder foundation. It does say medium to full coverage. I feel like I can't really get this up to a full coverage. I think more of like a, a strong medium coverage, but it's not completely covering up like every single imperfection. Now I could go on with another layer, but I do feel like I've already put on enough to where if it's claiming to be full coverage, I should already be getting full coverage. But in terms of it being lightweight, in terms of it being matte, most definitely, in terms of it being natural, I do think it does look like a natural matte finish. Like you can tell in my opinion that I have makeup on, but it looks nice and it does look natural. So, so far, so good. I just think that I'm getting just a little bit of like clingage right up in here. But I'm gonna quickly put on the rest of my makeup so that we can get started with the wear test. So I'll just speed through this um, and then I'll show you guys what the final look looks like for today. 
Okay, I applied a good amount of liquids and creams on top of the powder foundation. So I'm actually going to take some more of it on a fluffy brush. And I'm also going to use it to set the liquids and creams on my face. So I'm just putting this on top of my blush and bronzer. I'm not like setting the whole face because the rest of it just, you know, already has powder on it. I am going to put a little bit like right here because I did kind of drag my concealer down a little bit. So I'm just putting it in the areas where I have like a liquid or a cream on top of the powder foundation. Okay, so here is the finished look for today and everything that I have on is in the description box in case you are interested. So my first impression on this new powder foundation, I think it looks nice, but it's nothing that's like blowing me away so far. Like I said earlier, I'm having just a little bit of texture right up in this area, but nothing crazy. Like I feel like if you're standing at a normal distance away from me, you might not even notice that. But you know, other than that, and I think it looks okay. It's a nice powder foundation, but like I said, nothing, you know, groundbreaking so far, but we are going to wear it to see like how oily I get or how quickly I get oily. So let's check that out. And we're shooting for a full eight hour wear test. So let's get started. It's about 9.30, 9.45 in the morning. So I'll do a midway check-in and then I'll come back after about eight hours and I'll give y'all my final thoughts. Okay, so we are about four hours in, I believe. I think I started right before um, 10 o'clock. So this is what we're looking like so it's wearing like you know any typical foundation would wear on my oily skin I always get oily like right up in the t-zone area first particularly on the nose so I am shiny on the nose and the forehead area I do think it looks better right up in here because my oils have kind of like smoothed things out a little bit so I feel like after I blot and repowder which I'm going to do in a second I have a feeling it's going to look better for the rest of the wear test but we'll see so this is what we're looking like one more time before I go in and refresh. So I'm just gonna take a clean piece of tissue and blot in the T-zone area. And as usual, I'm just checking to see if any of the makeup is like pulling off on the tissue or does the makeup still look pretty much intact. And I definitely wanna get like on the sides of the nose. I'm wondering though, should I bother repowdering like right on the sides of the nose? I'm gonna do it. I just wanna see like how it layers up in that area. Cause this to me looks good as is, but I'm gonna take, oh, my sponge got really dirty. I don't know how that happened on that side, but I'm gonna take the, um, this is the medium coverage side. So this is like the microfiber type side. This is what you're supposed to use to touch up during the day as well. So I'm gonna take a little bit more of the powder and I'm just repowdering in the areas where I just took off the excess oil. So I'm paying close attention to what it looks like right up in here because I said earlier it was clinging a little bit and I do think that it lays a little bit better this time around. So let me know what you think. So like I said, it's a little after two o'clock. So we'll go for about another four hours or so and then I will come back and I'll give you all my final thoughts. Okay, I'm back. It's going on 6.30. So that gives us a little over um, eight hours for today. So this is what we're looking like after wearing it all day. Remember, I did refresh about four hours ago and I am back to looking shiny, but that's, you know, to be expected. So I would say that the makeup did wear a little bit better in this area, which I was expecting that just because I feel like my natural oils help to like smooth some things out. So overall, like comparing this um, Makeup Forever powder foundation to some other ones on oily skin, I think that it wears okay in terms of like how long it takes for you to get shiny to the point where you have to touch up the makeup. I don't think that it wears quite as well as some other foundations that I'm going to show you in a minute in terms of like just how it looks on the skin. It doesn't look horrible by any means, but I do have some other powder foundations that I feel like they just look a bit more smooth, a bit more flawless on the skin. This one looked nice on application, but it was like as it had like a couple of minutes to set 
settle in I guess I didn't really care for it um, in the area where I have pores but like I said earlier it's nothing that you would have noticed if I hadn't pointed it out if that makes sense so um, if you're the type of person who loves powder foundation if that's your favorite type of foundation this one you know it wears okay um, it is $43 which is a standard price point for this brand so it's not overpriced for the brand but because it is $43 I do have some other options that I want to share with you that are more affordable so and ones that I like better than this one. Oh, before I show you that though I did want to mention um, this sponge I mean I already said it earlier I just don't think that the sponge is necessary it is a unique um, concept but I just I don't think that the sponge is necessary so okay so my um, three other recommendations that I think that I would prefer over the makeup forever one number one is Fenty this is still my favorite powder foundation it's been my favorite powder foundation since it came out um, and this one is about maybe ten dollars less than the Makeup Forever one. This next one I actually forgot about even though I kind of recently reviewed it but this is the Maybelline Superstay 24 hour powder foundation so this is the one that went viral on TikTok. So I personally don't ugh, my DoorDash order is here. <laughs> I don't wear this one because the um, the shade of this is too dark and it only comes in like 15 shades so that is a downside for this one but in terms of how it wears on the skin it wears very nicely. It looks really nice and natural and flawless at the same time and this one is very affordable because it's drugstore. And then another affordable one that I really like is the e.l.f. powder foundation. I actually haven't worn this in a while but this is one of my favorites as well and I think I'm pretty sure this one is the cheapest out of the three because um, I'm sure it's cheaper than Maybelline so like I said this makeup forever one it's good like if you're into powder foundations you know definitely try it out if you're still interested after seeing this review but I did just want to mention that these are the three powder foundations that I would recommend over the makeup forever one so I hope that y'all found all of that information helpful if you did please let me know by giving me a thumbs up down below make sure you're subscribed to the channel before you head out and I'll see y'all back here for my next one until until then, take care. Have a good one, y'all. Bye.